Welcome to Pelotech 101. Today's session I want to cover the operation and the function of a Harman control board. This particular control board is used on a lot of the automatic models. So I'm just going to kind of show you a little bit on the, on the dials here, what they do, and some of the different ways that you can operate the stove. So essentially we have three main dials and then we have a toggle switch. So we have what they call the feed adjuster dial. We have our igniter toggle, an auto, and a manual. We have our main two modes of operation. We have a stove temp mode and a room temp mode. And then we have the off setting where we're actually able to shut the unit down. And lastly, we have our temp dial. So we have a 50 through 90 degree range where we can set our temperature. Or we have our inside dial of a 1 through 7 where we can do a manual temperature setting on the unit. So let's go ahead and let's break down these dials a little bit and uh, just kind of teach you the ins and outs. So essentially I have room temp. On room temp, I am going from the 50 through 90 degree dial. So I'm able to set my temperature wherever I like it. The temperature is then being pulled off the room sensing probe. So this probe mounts right in the back of the stove. Most people will kind of coil this up, hang it right on the back of the stove. Generally speaking, you find the rear of the stove is going to be one of the coldest areas of the house. So it can be a great placement for this probe. You can also take these wires and you can extend this probe and be able to run this to any part of the house that you want. On room temp mode, like I mentioned, it's pulling from the temperature dial. So wherever I have my temperature set, the stove is going to be automatically adjusting the rate of feed as well as the room air fan to hold it at that temperature. So no matter what the temperature is outside, you have a fire that's constantly adjusting to keep your temperature exactly where you like it. Room temp is really the ideal mode and uh, one of the unique features of Harman that separates itself from some of the other stoves that are on the marketplace. On room temp mode, there is an L and an H. So that is a low and a high for that room air blower. So I do have some regulation with that. However, like I just mentioned, it will adjust that room air fan based on how it feels that room is calling for heat. On stove temp mode, it's a manual setting. So I'm actually looking at the inside of this dial. I'm looking at the one through seven. So essentially it's just a manual way of setting my feed rate. If I have this on the number one, it does not matter how cold or how warm it is outside. It's only going to operate on the lowest setting. If I crank this to a seven, the exact opposite. It's going to be running at a full force fire all of the time. So some people find that they do like to manually control the heat output of the stove. And the best way to do that is on the stove temp mode. Just like room temp, there is an L and an H. So I do have the ability of controlling that, that speed of my room air fan or my distribution fan and how much heat is actually blowing out into the house. When I want to shut the stove off, whether I'm on room temp or stove temp, I simply turn the dial to off. From there, it's going to go ahead and it's going to allow the stove to cool down. It's going to shut off the feed motor. The blowers are going to continue to stay running until the stove is completely cool. And once it knows that it's cool and it's safe, all the motors will shut off completely. Very simple. Right above our two modes of operation here, we have our igniter toggle. So on automatic, the stove is automatically going to light the fire. If I leave this on the auto setting, when I'm in room temperature mode, it's going to reach temperature, let's say 70 degrees. And from there, it's going to start throttling itself back down to a really small pilot fire. If it gets down to the lowest fire and the area still doesn't call for heat, it'll shut itself off and then it'll relight itself again when the room does call for heat. <clears throat> this is also a great way to operate the stove when you're looking at spring and fall weather where it can be warmer during the day, cooler at night, stove shuts itself on and off as needed. In the middle of the season when it's always cold, a lot of people will flip this toggle switch to manual once the stove lights. On manual mode, it'll basically allow the stove to throttle all the way down to that small pilot fire, but it holds that fire there. And when the house does call for heat, it can quickly ramp itself up and keep that temperature wherever you have it set on the control board. Manual is a great option for houses that are maybe a little older, a little draftier, a little bit bigger, as we know they're always going to be calling for heat in the winter. So it's great to keep that fire burning. It can quickly build that fire up so we stay exactly at the temperature where we want it. If I have a brand new construction house or I'm just heating a small room, generally speaking, we want to keep this on auto, allow the unit to shut on and off as the area is calling for heat. Now on this room temp mode, again, we also have this feed adjuster. So this comes into play when we're running on room temp. Feed adjuster is essentially like a governor in your car. So it's allowing the max amount of BTUs or the maximum amount of fuel to come into the unit. 
So for an example, this is a Harman Advance. So this stove has the ability of 48,000 BTUs. If I have this on a number six, it is a full 48,000 BTU stove. If I cut this down to a three, this is now a 24,000 BTU stove. So it's allowing the maximum amount of fuel that can come into the system at any given point in time. The best recommendation for the feed adjuster is I usually tell people to start on a three or a four. Have your stove on room temp and go ahead and crank that all the way up to 90 degrees. After 60 minutes or one hour of burning, you should see one inch from the edge of the fire to the edge of the burn pot. If the fire is down deeper in the fire pot, we need to increase this feed adjuster a little bit. If the fire is right at the edge of the fire pot or even pushing hot coals over the edge of the fire pot, then we need to tame down the feed adjuster a little bit. So the feed adjuster varies greatly based on insulation, based on climate, um, based on windows, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of variables with the feed adjuster and every home is a little different. So again, general rule of thumb, let's start it at a three or a four. And from there, see where that fire line is after 60 minutes of burning. And we can kind of adjust that accordingly based on your home and your circumstance. Uh, let's see here. So the other mode of operation here is stove temp. So again, LH, I have a one through seven dial manual control with that. If I'm running this on stove temp mode, I'm not paying attention to the feed adjuster at all. It does not come into play when running on stove temp because again, it's just a set rate of fuel, one through seven. If I'm running this on stove temp and I flip this down to manual, if I'm running this on anywhere out of four or less, it's actually gonna shut off the room air fan. So I have the ability to operate the stove, I can see the fire without having the, the hot air blasting out of the front. So it is a nice option if I do wanna see a fire, but maybe I uh, don't necessarily need all of the heat in the house at that particular point in time. If I turn that up above a four, then that room air fan will come on, and again, the stove will continue to operate based on whatever the setting I have on the control board is. Like I mentioned, whether you're running on stove temp or room temp mode, once you want to shut the unit down or if you're done operating the system, you simply turn this to off. The stove will go through the shutdown procedure and once everything is cool, everything will shut down. Lastly, we just want to kind of cover our indicator lights. So we have a power light. Once the unit's plugged into the wall, we're going to see a solid steady red light here for our power. Our status light is a troubleshooting tool. So in perfect operation, this will remain a solid city red. If there's an issue with the stove or it's sensing that something is wrong, this status light right here will actually give us a, a series of blinks. So one blink, two blinks, three blinks. And in our owner's manual, it's gonna let us know what those blinks are and it's able to help us troubleshoot should any problems arise. Next, we have our distribution blower. So our distribution blower is our room air fan. It's blowing air out into the room. Once the stove becomes hot enough, you will see that indicator light come on. We have our combustion light, our feed motor light, which the moment that I turn this from off, either to room temp or stove temp, we will see both the combustion and the feed motor light come on. And again, when we have the unit in automatic, we will also see the igniter light come on. Lastly, on the feed adjuster, we have a test all the way on that far right-hand side. So test allows all blowers to run full speed, full voltage, for 60 seconds or, or one solid minute. Again, it works great as a nice little troubleshooting tool. So if I wanted to listen to say my room air fan or my combustion fan or my feed motor run at full voltage, I can do that with a cold stove, turn it to test, all motors will run full, for a full 60 seconds. So again, uh, Harman's really built in some nice tools within the control board. There's some great features and functions based on my circumstance, the area that I'm heating. So that is kind of the basics with the features and the functions of the Harman control board. There is a lot to this control board. So we encourage you to comment, uh, send us an email. We're happy to assist, happy to help with any questions that you may have. We wanna make sure that you're operating your Harman in the most optimal way based on your situation and your desired needs. So um, feel free to comment on this video and uh, we thank you for joining us for another session of Pelotech 101.